Amen. Go with me to the book of Acts. Short word, short word um, that uh, I've been seeking the Lord and um, just saying, God, um, it's still on the back end of the series we've been dealing with. And I'm gearing up for fall, to be honest with you, um, as I've been kind of walking through this. Everything we're doing is setting up the series that we're going to kick off um, probably September with and all that good stuff when I get back from Africa. So I want to lift that up in prayer. And so let me pray, and then we'll just give you some background, and then we'll just talk through. There's no slides this morning because I just want to I just want to share from my heart, and I want to talk so you can kind of hear what God is doing and saying. So Holy Spirit, we bless you. Holy Spirit, um, Felix dies. Felix empties himself. And I want to hear from you this morning so I can share with your people. Just a brief, short challenge as a church, as a ministry, um, as we understand more and more who we are and what we're called to do. So God, um, it's been a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time seeking your face, a lot of time crying out to you. So Holy Spirit, just speak this morning. Um, my prayer is that we hear what you're saying and we accept the challenge this morning as a ministry. Not so much, well, individually, because the church is not a building, but it's an individual. And as we talk about the church and what you would have us to do, nothing new, nothing that people have not heard, but just a challenge again, God. So speak through me what you would have me to say so that you can get the praise, the honor, and the glory. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Hey man, do me a favor, turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, what sound are you making? Yeah, yeah, turn to your other neighbor, say, other neighbor. Yeah, come on, tell them, say, what sound are you making? Amen, yeah, very, very important, yeah, very, very important that we don't miss that this morning. So Acts chapter 2, it's going to make sense here in a little while. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. And I want to share, I'm going to be moving around um, Acts chapter 2 um, from verse 1 through 41. Don't get scared. I won't go through all of that. I just want to extract um, two things from this that I want to kind of amplify and share with you a little bit by way of challenge. And then next week we're going to pick up uh, the latter part and share from verse 42 onward uh, to 47 um, on the first part of the week. But let me just open up by saying uh, two things to you real quick. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, um, the Bible says this, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Okay? I repeat on me. Say, For the Son of Man, Son of Man have come to seek and to save, and to seek and to save the, lost. the lost. Okay. Now, let me tell you why I said that. Um, the, it's very, very important that we understand the only reason we exist in addition to praising God and giving God glory, and we had a great time in worship this morning and worshiping God, but then outside of that and apart from that, we have an obligation to go out into the world and tell people about, you kind of get what I'm saying, um, the love of God. Jesus didn't have to come to earth for us to worship him. Yeah. Yeah. You got that? He could have stayed up in heaven on his throne and just chillax a little bit with a heavenly drink. Amen. And just say, pour it up, pour it up, you know. He could have done that. I mean, that's God, right? But he left his home and come to earth for a specific reason. He went to Calvary for a specific reason. And that was to redeem you and me and to give us access to him. And now that he's come and gone back, his expectation is that we do the same thing as a body of believers, right? Very, very important that we not miss that. And so here's what Acts 1 says, Acts 1 and 8 it says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and then you will be witnesses. That, that's the Greek word martus, which simply means that you'd be willing to give your life or to die for. You kind of get it? To die for me. Um, beginning in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the world. What, let me connect that to Luke 19. Is that now that when the Holy Spirit comes, we're going to join Jesus or God in his work of bringing people into a relationship with him. Does that statement make sense, right? Very, very important that we not miss that. And in case you're wondering how we do that, we said this last week when we were teaching in Revelations 12 and 11. We talked about the war that was going on in heaven between Michael and the angels and the enemy and how Michael overbeat them, uh, overcame them. But then verse 11 says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their what? Yeah, so here's what martyrs do. Martyrs talk about 
their deliverance, talk about their Savior. They talk about what God was done so that people can hear and be brought into a relationship with God. So I want to refresh you a little bit um, with, with stuff that I've already shared, with stuff that you already know, but I want to get to a certain part in Acts chapter 2 to begin that dialogue. So here's what we've been teaching um, as part of, of us being all who God would have us to be, that there was a place where the disciples were called to go into the upper room and wait for the Holy Spirit to come, right? So now in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit uh, is about to make its entrance into the earth realm, and I want us to understand purpose. I want us to understand destiny again so we can begin the process of getting to where God would have us to go. So look at verse 1 of Acts chapter 2, and if you're there, say amen. amen. Come on, let me hear a little better amen than that. Amen. Good, good, good. It says here in verse 1, it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Let me stop. Now, understand with me, Pentecost is something that happens 50 days, right? And we're not here to talk about Pentecost. I want to get to a place, but it's, it's an event. Our Old Testament would call it the Feast of Weeks or the Shabbat, an event that happens 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord had told the disciples to go in the upper room and wait for the gift which the, Holy, which the Father would send to them because God is, God's intent was not to leave them at, as orphans. So as they were waiting in this upper room, 50 days later, the Holy Spirit comes and lands upon them. Now, let's go to work. It says, verse 2, And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Come on, say, a sound came from heaven. Say it again. Say, a sound came from heaven. A sound came from heaven. Now, now, this is me. This is me um, doing my exegetical work. Um, I'm one of those guys that will tell you um, that the sound was made. I'm one of those guys that will say to you, don't make the mistake of necessarily thinking that a wind was blowing. You kind of get what I'm saying? Because the simile in the text says the sound sounded like a rough wind. It sounded like, you know, I've been through a few hurricanes, right? And I know what a hurricane sounds like. Some of y'all don't get that, right? It's a lot of wind blowing and it's a lot of all that, but it makes a sound. It makes a sound that will scare the daylight out of you. You kind of get where I'm going? So I'm not so hung up. I'm not so hung up on the text on whether commentators will say the wind was blowing or the wind wasn't blowing and all that good stuff. My focus is the sound that, that was made. You kind of get what I'm saying? Because here, here's the, 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 the thing. If, if, if the wind is blowing, you can just you know, either cover up for the wind, hunker down for the wind. But I don't know that the wind will so much catch your attention as opposed to if there's a loud, booming sound. You get what I'm saying? If, if, if we're sitting here this morning and all a microphone begins to squeal, you will ignore the air condition and you will pay attention to the squeal. Does that make sense? Come on, say the sound. Now, of importance to the sound is the origin of the sound, okay? It didn't come from within the room, but my translation in my Bible says, a, a sound there came from heaven. Are you with me? A sound like a mighty rushing wind. So it seems to say to me that God is the source of this sound. Come on, does that make sense? Okay? That God is a source. That God is a source. And it says, notice this, that this sound came from heaven. And the text says, it was so loud that it filled the entire house where everyone was sitting. So lock into this. Assume for a moment this were the upper room and there were 120 plus people in there um, awaiting this thing that God was going to send called the Holy Spirit. And you don't know what this thing is. If the wind's blowing, you probably won't pay attention to the wind because being in Palestine, you're used to dust storms. You're used to the wind blowing. You're used to all kinds of stuff happening. But then if in the moment... Moment, whatever it is God promises about to happen and God uses this noise to get your attention, everyone in the room is going to hear it. Are you with me? Okay. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, listen for the sound. Tell the other neighbor, say, other neighbor, listen for the sound. Now watch this, watch this. So the sound is made, this loud sound is made from heaven that God uses the sound to catch the attention of the occupants of the room. Does that make sense? The purpose of the sound is to attract the attention of the occupants in the room. And then verse 3 says, 
and divided tongues as a fire appeared on, uh, on them and rested on each of them. And then verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, now if you're expecting some deep teaching on Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues, I hate to disappoint you. That's not today's message. <laughs> you kind of get what I'm saying. That's not today's message, right? If you want to know where I stand, I, I truly believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the gift of tongues. I believe in all of that. Just for the record, you kind of get where I'm going, okay? That's not today's message. But the point I want to make is that God made a sound to attract the attention of the church, right? And then in getting their attention, he now releases this promised Holy Spirit that he spoke about in John chapter 14. He released the Holy Spirit upon every occupant in the house whose attention he had. <laughs> this is the importance of the sound. Because lock into this. You could not have been in the room and not heard the sound. You get where I'm going? And, and, and so, so here, here's the point. When God wants to get your attention, believe you me, God will get your attention. Does that make sense? So you could not have been in the room and heard the sound. Now here's the other part. If you were in the room and you heard the sound, you received the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Notice what the text says. Watch this very carefully. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting, verse 2, and divided tongues, some of your translations said cloven towns, as a fire appeared on them and rested on each of them, and they were all filled with the Spirit, okay? And, and here's all I'm going to go into the doctrine of the Holy Spirit and the whole issue of the gift of tongues. And they began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance, right? So I believe, I believe, I believe personally God could have used whatever he wanted to do at the moment that he did it to allow people to realize that they received the Holy Spirit. That's his prerogative. He could have done what he wanted to do. Does that make sense? Okay? So, because here's what we do. If we get stuck on the manifestation of the Spirit being only the gift of tongues, we will miss the move of God in other places and other instances. You get it? Okay. So, they all needed the Holy Spirit, but he needed the Holy Spirit to do a unique thing in that moment. Y'all get this? A unique thing in the moment. So he empowered every single person in the room that heard the sound. Now, where am I going with this? You're in the room today, and if God has already made a sound in your life, and you've accepted him as Lord and Savior, you too have the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. Turn to him and say, neighbor, Amen. what sound are you making? Yeah, okay. We'll talk about this in a little while. Are you with me? But by virtue of the fact that you're in the room and you've accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, you've heard the sound and you've received the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Now, if you hadn't heard the sound, don't say I've got the Holy Spirit in me. Okay, but if you're in here, you've heard it. Now, come on, say they have the Holy Spirit. Now watch purpose. Watch purpose. I'm not going to be long. I just want to share a couple of pointers so we can move out of here. Verse 5 could almost be a parenthetic. What do you mean by that, preacher? Okay, verse 1 through 4 talked about what was going on in the upper room. And then verse 5 now moves outside of the upper room out into the community. All right, you guys are with me. So out in the streets, verse 5 picks up. What's happening? I got to get back in the light because can't see over there. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, need. Yeah, amen. There you go. This is, this, these are my glasses. Yeah, yeah. It says here, there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men. That means godly people. Not Christians, but just godly people. From every nation under heaven. I love that word nation, ethnos or ethnicity. And at this sound, the multitude came together 
and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in their own language, and they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of them in our own native language? And then verses 5 onward start to tell you who were there. There were black folk and white folk and Asian folk and Mexican folk and hood folk and suburban folk and all kinds of rich people and poor people. Everybody was there. But when they heard this sound, it connected with them. So let me, let me help you in case you're missing it. The people are in the upper room waiting on the Holy Spirit. God makes a sound inside the room. And then there's some people outside of the room that were waiting on the people inside the room. <laughs> and then so check this out, check this out. So, so, so. This is going to shock you in a little while, right? Um, and, and so it seems, it seems now that the reason the Holy Spirit entered them the way that he did, it wasn't for them. It was for the people on the facts, Pastor Karen. Y'all know about the facts, right? Yeah, yeah, y'all ain't too saved, amen. Y'all used to be out there, yeah, amen. On the facts that needed to hear what's going on on the inside. You kind of get what I'm saying? So lock into this. So in the room, God told them how to speak to the people on the facts. <laughs> Y'all miss that. You get that, Karen? Uh, Kathy, you got that? So, so in the room, watch this. He gave them dialect, gloss is the Greek word, so that the manifestation of the Spirit in them would attract the people on the outside. Where are you getting that? Okay, watch the text real quick. Notice back up to verse um, 4. They were full with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm almost done. Verse 5. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And look at verse 6. At this sound. Come on, say this sound. Say it again. Say this sound. If you don't do your exegetical work or pay close attention to the text, you will mistake this sound for being the sound that God made in heaven that filled the room. That's the surface reading, right? That you heard, there came a loud noise from heaven. And it was so loud that the whole community heard it. No, 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 no. It was loud, but it was loud enough for the people to hear on the inside. So the Greek word is the word echo, which simply means a noise was made. It was a noise. It was a noise. It was a noise, right? When you get to verse 6, the word sound that's used in verse 6 is a completely different word. It's the Greek word phone. And what phone refers to vocals or sound that is made from the, no from the mouth. So check this out. There's a sound that God made in heaven that affected the church, but then there was a sound that the church made that affected. I wish I had somebody in here. Yeah. Excuse me, y'all. Excuse me. Lord, gee, this, yeah. There's a sound that when God makes his sound, that the church ought to echo a sound that impacts the community. You got to get this. Right? And so here's what the text says. When the community heard the sound, what did they hear? Hear? Oh my gosh! Well, I can't. I'm not going to get through this because this is messing up my world. At this sound, right? And what sound was that? The sound of verse four. You see that? Let me get grammatic for y'all. The closest antecedent down, right? Verse 4, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And look at where phone gets its meaning. They were speaking. So phone, speaking, phone, right? They were speaking in, what's it? Other tongues, tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then verse 5 says, here's the audience that the utterance God was giving them four where they were located. Right? You kind of get this? And when the audience, verse 6, at this sound, the multitude came together. They were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak their own language. I like that. I like that. And so, their own language, saying, verse 7, they were amazed. 
and astonished, saying, Are these not all Galileans? How it is that we hear each of them in his own language? And it talks about where they're from. Parthians, right? Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, visitors of Rome, both Jews, proselytes, Cretans, and Arabians. Watch this. We hear them telling in our own language. What? The mighty... <laughs> y'all get this? It, y'all get this? So, 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 I mean, it, it's not like they're just saying stuff, okay? That's why I said this is not the time to talk about the gift of tongues and so on and so forth. But this gift was so unique that unsaved folk could have had the interpretation. <laughs> this is not the tongues where Corinthians 14, where you need a person over there to stand up and interpret what was being said. This was a tongue that was given for the people on the facts. The people across the street. The people on the Air Force Base. The people at Raytheon. The people in the apartment complex, right? That when the church made this sound based on the sound that God made in heaven, the people in the community heard the sound coming from the church and they connected with it. Y'all with me? You kind of get where I'm going with this, right? I'm almost done. I'm almost done, right? And it says, here's what they heard, verse 12. And they were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean, right? Um, well, back up, back up to verse 8. How it is that we each hear, each of us, in our own native language, and it gives the list of all of this good stuff, okay? So let me say this, and then, then I'm going to say one more thing, and then I'm going to stop. The reason God filled you with the Holy Spirit and the reason God gifted you wasn't so much, and this is why I sound like a broken record, for us to have good church in here. God wants you to make a sound so that when you walk outside the door, the world will be drawn to you because you connect with them, you can identify with them, listen to this, and they will hear through you what God has done in you. You see, Miss Annette, where are you from? Y'all don't talk like that. Them southern people. You are most qualified to go to Omaha, metaphor, metaphor, and speak Omahanian. <laughs> right? You kind of get what I'm saying. Okay, you're most qualified. But here's the depth of it. In Omaha, you might have been okay. But Sister Pat, she might not have been from Omaha, but she might have had problems that people in Omaha might have had. You kind of get what I'm saying? And when the Holy Spirit comes on her, he doesn't use what she has naturally. He makes a sound and he puts in her what he needs her to have at the time. Needs her. I wish I had somebody in here to have it. You kind of get what I'm saying? So she now can speak to the Omahanian person, if there's such a thing, you know, the person from Omaha, and they, I, hey, how you know that? You not from there? How in the world are you speaking my language? You don't look like you should be able to speak my language. You don't look like you ought to know what I've been through. You don't look, and here's what she said. Listen, it ain't about me. God made a sound, and the sound resonated in me, and the sound filled me with the Holy Spirit. And as a result, I can't keep quiet. I've got to make a sound mess. I wish I had somebody in here. And the sound that she makes attracts me to God because I don't see her. I see God in her. I just wonder what sound are you making? <laughs> what, what sound are you making? You kind of get what I'm saying? What sound are you making? Because I'm telling you, God has given you a sound. And, and the beauty of this sound that God has given you is not for you. It's for the people on the outside. You get it? So a lot of us look at Acts chapter 2 and we lock into the, the gift of tongues 
and we want to say, you got to have this Holy Spirit experience, and all we want to do is have tongues to speak to each other. I already heard the sound. You ain't got to tell me your sound ain't doing me no good because your sound that you're making is not for me. Because I've got my own sound. I need to. (laughs) Y'all get this? You get this, right? You get this, right? Notice Jesus. When Jesus came on the face of the earth, then I'm, I'm done. Jesus came on the face of the earth. He says, I do nothing except the Holy Spirit moves in me. And then he makes his sound. And his sound looks like healing the sick and raising the dead and feeding the 5,000 and doing all the miraculous that he did. And look at Acts chapter 2. Wherever Jesus went, there was a multitude. Why? Because they kept hearing the sound of God through him. And the sound attracted people. So this is just me as a leader. I'm challenged with this. If we're not attracting people, I have to ask myself the reverse. Are we making a sound? Or are we just making noise? Because I think where the sound is made from heaven that God made and we speak the sound of God, there's an attraction that happens. And when people come, they hear, listen to this, the wonders of God declared in their own language. You ever been to church that when the preacher got through preaching, you're like, what did he say? That's because he didn't preach in your language. Because <laughs> when God speaks, right, look at results. Look at results, and I'm going to stop because I want you to process that with me. What sound are you making? So they go through all that stuff. Okay, people say some of the ones that weren't ready, they're drunk. I'm going to go really fast. They weren't ready. Don't miss that. They got, they're drunk. They're all that kind of stuff. Verse 16 onward, Peter gets up and say, gets up and say, it's the prof- prophecy of Joel that's being realized. Then he preaches this powerful message, okay? Now, I don't know whether he did it in English or whatever language he did it, but people heard it. Very, very important. Okay, then you get to verse 41. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about how many souls? 3,000 souls from... If I were to guess, 120 people making a unique sound. Y'all get that? Y'all get that? Everybody spoke. Everybody spoke. Everybody spoke. Everybody made a sound. The community was attracted to the noise of the sound the church was making. And 3,000 people in one day give their heart to God because of the sound coming from the congregation. Amen. All week. Hey, Felix, what sound are you making? This is me. I heard God, and I'll tell you all day long, I've got the Holy Spirit. I never really thought about it. What sound are you making? Who are you attracting to God? Think about it. Because if you heard the sound from heaven, there ought to be a sound now emanating from us. And we can use sound as a metaphor for ministry, for whatever. But it ought to be something coming out of us because we didn't hear God just for us to say we heard God. Two sounds in the text. God did his, and the church did theirs. So my challenge for Restoration Christian Fellowship, what sound are we making? (laughs) Right? I want to leave you with this. I want to encourage you to just bow your heads for a moment, because I'm done. I'll be simple. We'll pick this up next week and look at the remaining verse. I want to challenge every believer in here, come on worship team, to search your heart. Every believer, to search your heart. And then in the searching of your heart, here's the prayer. God, let me hear you again 
so I can echo your sound. The world is waiting. The world is dying. The world, songwriter said, is hungry for the living bread. And it's our challenge to live the Savior up for the world to see. Because Jesus said in his word that if he's lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. All week I've been, Lord, what song am I making? And is there a sound that you've given me? I, I know the answer. I know the answer. But sometimes we can get distracted with life. We can get distracted with a whole lot of stuff. And we can miss God in our lives. And then I want to go here. If you're here and you came this morning because you're going through what you're going through, you are where you are. And you're here because you heard the sound from heaven. There's two sounds. The one from heaven and it's drawn you here to God. I want to give you a chance to respond. If you have not said yes to God, if you haven't given your life to him, I want to give you a chance just to say, God, I want to accept you into my life as personal Lord and Savior. And if you hear the sound straight away and you're saying, God, man, I heard you. I want to rededicate my life. We want to give you a chance to come. Then if you're here and you're saying, I've been hanging out here for a while. I want to make this my church home because I like the sound I hear here. I want to be taught how to echo it now. That phony sound to open my mouth to say what God would have me to say. The world is waiting. Let's all stand to our feet. You must stand to your feet. Holy Spirit, we give this to you, God. I ask that you move mightily in our midst this morning, Lord. I ask that you move in this place. As your word has gone forth, God, should there be one that needs to be drawn to you, draw them, God. Draw them, draw them. We give them to you, God, that you get the glory. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Heal, redeem, restore. Do whatever you need to do to bring people to you. We give this to you, God, that you get the praise. Move in this place. Draw. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen.